So we've had a few ghosts from the past make a return. All the boomer shooter games hearkening to old school gameplay, slower paced tactical shooters like Ready or Not, not to mention the gradual rise of extraction based shooters. In both the AAA and indie scene we have a ton of quality shooters with a lot of different flavors that appeal to different people. An old but recently utilized style of shooters have cropped out of the blue, games inspired by fear. The first fear was arguably Monolith's best game ever made. And the only other game that they made that's equal to it is Condemned Criminal Origins, also from Monolith, which is my favorite horror game ever made. But lately we've had a few games that take inspiration from the fast and chaotic style of action from the John Woo movies. Games like Trepang 2, My Friend Pedro, the Max Payne series, and the Hong Kong Massacre create this sort of gunfights where sparks and particles are flying everywhere, a ludicrous amount of destruction is also added into the mix. Most of these games utilize bullet time, a slow-mo mechanic used to give the player a breather in the middle of a chaotic gunfight. In this video, I will be talking about another one called Severed Steel, a game that I finally got around to playing and one that I'm glad that I made time for. Severed Steel is a movement-based shooter developed by Greylock Studio and published by Digerati. The main brain behind the project is Matthew Larrabee, who had originally started with playing around with the Half-Life SDK kit when he was younger. While nothing from him was really made, it sparked enough of an interest for him to eventually teach it to 6th grader students, teaching them game development. The experience had inspired him to make his own game, that would be a combination of his main sources of inspiration. A fast paced shooter with dynamic movement and slow mo mechanics similar to what you'd see in Fear or Max Payne. Severed Steel is a combination of those games, but it's also a combination of other games like Superhot, Hotline Miami, and also a Half-Life mod called The Specialists. It was a Half-Life mod that takes the Matrix and puts it into a multiplayer environment with bullets and diving players flying everywhere. There aren't a lot of games like this, but it's something that stands out in its own way. Something that can be incredibly fast but also slow due to the bullet time mechanics. Severed Steel makes this loop the main focus while also giving it its own setting with a minimalistic premise. You go from level to level and kill everything that gets in your way while completing certain objectives. In terms of how you manage your health, well, it's called luck in this game. And to keep your luck, you need to kill enemies. Headshots are the most ideal here, especially for scoring. But if your luck runs out, you have to either start the whole level again or start from the last checkpoint of the level. But each level is relatively short, so you'll have to get used to starting all over if you screw up. For multiple chapters, you pretty much do the same thing, and as for where you are, why you're doing this and who are the people that you're fighting against? Well, it doesn't really matter because the game has little to no story whatsoever. There's no information or stuff to read about your character or what's going on and why you only have one arm in the first place. It doesn't really get explained to you. But according to the article I read, the developer of the game had said that the game is a revenge story. The main character, Steel, has worked for the company Eden Seas her whole life. But after an injury on the job, Eden Seas decides she isn't of value anymore and throws her out. That's about it as far as I know. But the game does have cutscenes that may provide a bit more information, such as the older woman that you can see. A possible theory could be that your character is actually a clone of her, and I guess that whoever she is, is using you to get back at the corporation, so to speak. But other than that, there's nothing else to work with. But again, it's not exactly the main focus of the game. That would be in the main gameplay loop itself. Some forms of media tend to play to their strengths and recognize what they're good at, capitalizing on that strength and making it as polished as possible ending up being a good product. And there are others that try to be good at everything and more often than not end up being just average or not very good across the board. Severed Steel knows what it is and doesn't concern itself with aspects that aren't relevant to the game that it wants to be. And what kind of game is Severed Steel? Well, it's a lot of slow motion mixed in with a ton of movement variety. You can wall run, double jump, slide, do flips, and dive like in Max Payne. The game is really fast without the slow motion, but the slow motion itself changes the pace to a point where the player can actually relax a little bit more, no matter how chaotic the gunfight is. The slow motion that's utilized also adds a puzzle element to it, figuring out the best method of clearing a room, knowing which weapons are more effective, and also the bullet count itself. Not ammo count, bullet count. So, because of the circumstance of your character only having one arm, you can only fire the weapon until it's empty and then discard it for another one. Now, if you ask me, the character is just straight up lazy. The character from the game Endoparasitic has all three of his limbs ripped out by monsters, 
with literally only one arm left and he still manages to reload his weapons. So what's this character's excuse exactly? Anyway, joking aside, the huge variety of weapons and the amount of enemies does make up for it. In fact, the lack of ammo does encourage experimenting with different weapons and seeing what results you can get from it and there are a lot of weapons that you can unlock. If you run out of bullets, you can then throw it at an enemy or get up close and personal and kick them, grabbing their weapon in the process and continuing the onslaught. There is, however, a card that you can get that does give you one more reload. So there is that at least. The campaign is just a sequence of different levels with some variety in between. They all comprise of the facility that you're in while each having their own distinct design to them. The environments themselves are all voxel based and you can destroy a lot of it too thanks to the cannon that you have on your left. It can be used to create new pathways or to blow up the enemies with shields or those that have a lot of armor or just about anybody. Speaking of the enemies, well, there's not a lot of variety here. You're mainly just fighting soldiers with different weapons. Some have shields, some have armor, or even a flamethrower with a gas tank on the back that you can blow up. There are boss fights though, but again, it's nothing that you can't handle, just like the enemies. Beyond the campaign, you do have a wealth of content to keep yourself busy with. You have the mode called Rogue Steel, which is the game's roguelike mode basically, featuring randomized enemies and player cards that can have a buff or a nerf effect that can make the game either easier or harder, depending on what you end up with. You also have New Game Plus, which also randomizes enemies and makes it so that they constantly spawn. Players that want more of a challenge should give it a try. Then you have Firefight, which is to kill every enemy in the level, basically. And as for those levels, you do need to level up in order to unlock more levels, and also more weapons and cannon variants in the process. The game has a lot of different options to tailor make the kind of challenge that you want, with different mutators to boot on top of the game's difficulty modes. In fact, you can even make it so that you die in one hit, raising the stakes even higher. But those type of challenges are actually worth it because it increases the amount of XP that you can gain with each level completed. If you find yourself starving for more content, well then you're in luck, because the game has a level editor that you can use to create your own levels. People have been publishing their own into the workshop, and you can also play their levels to see what they're about. It makes me happy when I see stuff like this because as long as there is interest in the game, people will always be able to provide content for it. Just look at Ultra Kill with the Rude Level Editor. People have already been making custom maps with the game. And if anything goes by with Act 3, with the official level editor that's been talked about, or as far as I know, the potential for that game is going to be limitless. In other words, the game is infinitely replayable just on the merit of the custom levels that you can create with the level editor. The game is a lot of fun and is great if you want to do nothing more than just go guns blazing and look cool while doing it. But aside from the already fantastic gameplay, there is of course the graphics and music. Graphically, the game has a really nice mix of sci-fi and industrial voxel aesthetics making it feel like you're in a world that's like a blend of the Matrix and Tron put together. The lack of static lighting is replaced with a metric ton of lights that are virtually everywhere, with skylights and post-process LUT making up a lot of the lighting that you see in this game. The models themselves are also quite impressive, with a good amount of detail added to each weapon and the enemies too, while still looking somewhat minimalistic in their presentation. It shows that even for a game like this, a game that was mostly worked on by one person, you can still make a really good looking game with a powerhouse engine like the Unreal Engine. And I say mostly because he also had help in other departments, most notably the music. The soundtrack made by Floating Door is a real banger here. There are a lot of different flavors added into the mix, fusing elements of house, drum and bass, breakcore, glitch hop and ambient together into one of the best soundtracks made for a shooter. Music is a thing of taste, but at the end of the day, it's a soundtrack made with purpose that actually fits into the atmosphere and setting that this game has. And so that's Severed Steel, a fantastic woo styled shooter that I finally got around to playing and one that I'll be going back to from time to time. It's got a lot of replayability from the variety of game modes, its level editor, its mutators, and its advanced form of movement enhanced by the slow-mo style of gameplay. The term I mentioned this game being is something that is somewhat vague unless you have an understanding of the sources of inspiration involved and what sets the John Woo movies apart from a lot of others. The best way to describe those movies is this. You take any martial arts movie and you give them guns instead. And what you end up with are a lot of bullets flying, sparks going everywhere, everything getting destroyed in the process with a more stylistic kind of presentation of the gunfights. Not too far apart from martial arts, mind you. In the context of games like say Fear or Trepang 2, 
They're very stylish in terms of movement, and this game in particular, Severed Steel, has a lot of it. However, there are some things that I don't like about this game. For starters, the game at times feels really floaty, but floaty to the point where it feels like you're in space. It's great on its own, but the sense of gravity is sometimes kind of off-putting, where I kind of feel like the game should be a little bit more snappier. It was something I realized when I started playing Trepang 2, and then went back to this game. This game in comparison feels very floaty, while Trepang 2 is very snappy and quick with its movement. The leveling, on the other hand, is a grind even with stacking mutators and difficulty bumps. You'll have to get used to redoing levels and challenges over and over again until you have access to the different character colors, weapons, and cannon variants. But other than that, the game is fantastic and is definitely worth picking up. The developer has another game in the works called Echo Point Nova, and it looks to be an expansion and evolution of the mechanics that were implemented in Severed Steel, but with a new setting and hopefully better gameplay. Definitely looking forward to that one too. But in the meantime, give Severed Steel a try, you won't regret it. Thank you for watching.